I am uh, truly proud to announce uh, Cincinnati Police Department veteran Elliot Isaac as Cincinnati's next police chief, effective today. <laughs> chief Isaac has been serving in this capacity on an interim basis since September, and most recently he served as executive assistant police chief. A comprehensive feedback process was utilized in an effort to receive as much input as possible. This included one-on-one -on -one meetings, a survey of the public, as well as a survey of police officers, and facilitated panel discussions representing a diverse cross-section of policymakers and community leaders. The feedback received throughout this inclusive process served to validate my choice of Elliot Isaac as our next Chief of Police. He is in many ways Cincinnati's choice to lead this outstanding organization. His extensive career serving at nearly every level of law enforcement within the police department has more than prepared him for this opportunity and this truly uh, challenging job. He intimately knows and understands the issues facing the city of Cincinnati as well as the police department. Our expectations of him are high, and he is up for the challenge. The city is fortunate to have his steady hand at the helm. The first order of business will be working with Chief Isaac to fill other key leadership positions within the department at the level of assistant chief and captain. The goal is to have the leadership team solidified well in advance of spring when there is often a surge in crime. We will be planning a formal ceremony for the department and public to be held uh, at some point prior to the end of the calendar year. At this time, let's welcome to the podium our new police chief, Elliot Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Black. Good morning to you all, Mayor Cranley, members of council, and all of those who participated in this process. I am truly honored to be named the 15th police chief for the Cincinnati Police Department. It's truly a privilege to lead such a fine, dedicated group of men and women. During the past several months, we have worked very hard at strengthening and re-energizing the department. That has gone well. As we move forward, our key priorities will continue to be addressing violent crime and using the best practices and innovative approaches to have some impact there. Secondly, we must continue to engage our community partners in the spirit of the collaborative agreement. And third, we must continue to grow our intelligence and technology platforms that will enable us to be the data-driven and evidence-based police department that we need to be in the future. I'm extremely excited about this opportunity, and I truly look forward to working with the community and moving forward. So thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask our Vice Mayor Mann to offer some comments. He will be followed by Councilman Christopher Smitherman, and then we will hear from our Mayor, uh, John Cranley. I told uh, Chief Isaacs before we came in here that uh, I, for one, am very proud of the selection. I know he will serve us well. I said we're all counting on him. And uh, we already have learned just how effective and superb his leadership will be. So this is a happy day for Cincinnati. And Chief, uh, we will support you and uh, look forward to the improvements that you will bring to our department. Thank you. Good morning, 
As the Chair of Law and Public Safety, I want to congratulate Chief Isaacs on your appointment. We are so excited about that. I want to thank our city manager uh, for his deliberate process and his leadership um, during some tough times. And we appreciate his selection today. And I would like all of you to give him a round of applause of support. Thank you. Obviously, I want to bring greetings to our vice mayor and our great mayor, uh, John Cranley. You know, we've hired 100 new officers in a very short period of time. We've, we've left the discussion of pink slips, supporting our law enforcement, making sure that we have another recruit class in January. The Cincinnati Police Department is the best police department in the United States of America, and I want to be very clear. As the chair of law in public safety, we have your back. Congratulations, Chief Isaacs, and we look forward to working with you. What a great day for Cincinnati. First, I want to extend my congratulations to Chief Isaac and to thank City Manager Harry Black for making such a great choice. I also want to thank the members of council, uh, Vice Mayor David Mann, Councilman Smitherman, Councilman Winburn, Councilman Murray, Councilman Flynn, who voted yesterday uh, for the ordinance that was necessary uh, to make this happen. Um, without that, we wouldn't be here. And so I think it's important to thank th those five members of council for doing the right thing. I also want to take a minute to talk about where we are and where we're going. As Christopher just said, we have the best police department in the country. We have been through a lot over the last 15 years. And let's be real. Other cities around the country right now are going through very difficult times, whether it's Chicago, whether it's Baltimore, whether it's St. Louis, whether it's Cleveland, New York, on and on and on. And we're not perfect. We know that. And we have to keep investing in relationships and the, the community-oriented policing. But the fact is, and I have gotten to know a lot of the mayors around the country, everywhere you go in every one of these cities, when they talk about where they are and where they're going, they look to Cincinnati as the model. That's incredible. And let's face it, we were tested this summer with a bad shooting, which of course was not of our officers, but it was the kind of thing that was a real challenge. And the fact is that because of the relationships we have and the protocols that we have in place and the professionalism of our police department and the diversity of our police department, we've been able to get through. Now, obviously, there's always fear that something else could happen in the future, but the fact is that I think we're as, as best positioned of any police department in the country because we changed patterns and practices before it became in vogue, and we invested in community-oriented policing before it became the hot topic that it now is around the country. Because you remember, when we started moving in that direction, the, the, the rest of the country was focusing on the policing model in New York and elsewhere that now has come under a number of complaints. And so the other thing I want to say is that this commitment to community policing and targeted enforcement against repeat violent offenders as the hallmark of our approach and moving away from the rounding up people for small offenses, which is now what every other city is looking to do, but they've got a lot of issues to tackle, is a change that didn't happen overnight, but it's a change that's been embraced by our entire police department. And I look at Chief Isaac and I look at the wonderful captains over here that I've gotten to know over the years and I see my good friend Jim Whalen has come um, to be here today. This is a team effort by the entire police department and all the training that has occurred and all of the efforts that have occurred over the last uh, 15 years and beyond. And I have felt 
a commitment to the model that we have become at all levels of the police department. You know, what's interesting was that there was a time not too long ago, 15 years ago, where we decided, and I supported strongly, the ability to hire and fire the chief from inside the department or outside the department. And that was the right decision to make. However, we now are, have a department where we literally can't find anybody that's as schooled in the progressive policing that we are, except for by picking from within our department. And so an internal selection is, a re is not only the right decision on the merits, but it's a reward to the entire department to say, we believe in you, and we believe in this culture, and we believe that this team is going to support each other in a way that's going to allow us to go fight the bad guys and bring down this horrible violence. So what we're going to do from here is continue to commit to policing and community policing. And so uh, I'm proud to announce that the manager and the chief and myself, and Councilman Smitherman and anybody else from council who wants to join us, will be hosting a series of community meetings with the new permanent chief starting with a community policing roundtable on January 5th, followed by evening meetings in all five districts so that all citizens can come and tell us what's on their mind. Uh, because we, our number one priority is reducing the violence and the shootings. We are in that wonderful place that I talk about all the time, that 15 years ago, civil rights leaders were marching on City Hall against the police which they're doing in many other cities right now. And right now, our civil rights leaders who are sitting here with us are marching arm in arm with our police in the neighborhoods against crime. We still have far too much crime and far too many shootings, but I wouldn't trade places with any mayor or any city in the country, because I know we got the best police department in the country, and now we've got a great chief to lead it. Thank you very much. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we uh, will be hosting uh, a more formal ceremony for Chief Isaac uh, sometime before the end of the calendar year, and it'll be an event for the department and the citizens of Cincinnati. We will take a couple of questions, uh, if there might be any. Well, as with all of uh, our department heads, I've uh, executed performance management agreements with them. Uh, the police chief also has a performance management agreement. The key is uh, uh, looking at uh, the collaborative agreement and the standards and expectations that are set forth in that to make certain that we are doing everything that we can to sustain those, uh, those tenets, uh, those core basic tenets, which is basically uh, doing everything we can to uh, enhance and make as sustainable as possible uh, the community policing uh, uh, goals and objectives that we have. Obviously, as the mayor has mentioned, you know, at the end of the day, we have to make certain that we have the safest city possible. So we're obviously tracking uh, uh, metrics as it relates to crime, as well as how we can be more proactive and predictive uh, and more intelligent in terms of how we approach crime fighting as well as crime prevention. Uh, I don't have this performance management agreement in front of me, but I'd be more than glad to share that with you. Uh, there will be standards, there will be metrics, uh, but I don't necessarily subscribe to the school of thought of saying you know, we've got to have no more than 25, 30 homicides this year. The, 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 the dynamic of the environment is what it is and what it will be. The key is to make certain that we are adhering to the basic fundamental principles that makes this police department and this city unique. Before I forget, the next, I just want to make one protocol point. I want to acknowledge Sheriff Jim Neal is here, our great, uh, partner from Hamilton County. Thank you for coming. We, we do want to make certain that he's happy as well. 
Sheriff, uh, thank you for coming as well. Uh, Chief Isaac and I, you know, we, we're still having discussions about that. The, you know, there will be an open competitive process uh, uh, for that next round of personnel actions. Uh, we have been having discussions about adding an additional assistant chief to the team, which, which is highly probable. Uh, but in terms of specifics at this time, we're still working through those details. Isaac, would you mind stepping to the mic one uh, quickly? And for those who don't know you, and obviously everyone here likely does, talk about your, what you love about the Queen City, what makes this such a special place to be, and again, about your personal background. The Chief Isaac, please. Yes, I've spent the past 27 years in service to this city. It's a, it's a great city. What's unique about Cincinnati is the resilience of its citizens. We've been through a lot coming through the civil unrest of 2001 and the, the distance that we've traveled. We still have much to do and much work to, to roll our sleeves up and, and get busy at, but uh, I think this, the citizens are, are to be applauded for their willingness to engage and be involved with policing their city. It's not just simply what law enforcement can do, this is a collaborative effort. So. Well, we're going to continue to focus and make sure that we're using the best evidence possible. We want to deploy in a manner that we don't cause harm to our neighborhoods. We want to have impact, but we want to have impact in a manner that does not cause harm. I, I do believe. I, I understand very clearly where we've come from. I, I'm very much aware of the, the approaches that we took prior to that. I've seen how we've evolved and where we are today. So uh, the learning curve as far as knowing the city and knowing where we've come from and how we police, uh, I'm already there. Uh, in terms of my approach, initially, uh, just based on my own career, I, I've been able to establish relationships with uh, current police chiefs in other cities. Uh, I've had numerous discussions with, with, with my, those individuals, uh, just getting feedback, developing insight. Uh, so that went into informing my overall approach and decision. Again, my decision to focus on the internal candidate, as the mayor said, uh, we, have, uh, we have highly competent and highly capable uh, uh, law enforcement executives at every level of this department. Uh, so I focused on the department as well. Uh, again, my decision and the approach was predicated on what made sense for now, for the city of Cincinnati, and what made sense for the department. Uh, and again, a lot of times you don't, as the mayor stated, you don't have that luxury of having uh, uh, talent from within to the extent that we have here. Uh, so again, it was a professional decision on my part based on where I see the city and where I saw the department at that time. 